Hey everyone, what's going on? As you can tell by the title of this video, today's review is on the Canon new FD 135mm f2 lens. It's a lens made in 1980, is a manual focus lens, was primarily made for film cameras. But nowadays we're all adapting vintage lenses for our digital cameras out there. How does it perform in that regard? What's it like to shoot on film? What's the build quality like? I'm gonna talk about all that right now. Before I do, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so, like this video. It helps out the channel a lot, it helps me out a lot. And big thanks to all those of you who have subscribed thus far. I really appreciate it. It has been a pleasure to make these videos for you guys. As you guys know, I work on another channel, Geek Culture, but this is sort of my, my personal channel that I love to talk about gear that I like, and especially vintage gear like this that I think is really exciting. So that's we're doing right here. Now, here's a Cliff Notes version of this video in case you don't have time to watch this entire review. This lens performs beautifully. It exceeded my expectations. It resolves 45 megapixels amazingly on the Canon R5. Beautiful bokeh. Uh, if you are a portrait photographer, you want a manual focus lens, you want something that has a little bit of character, it's not so perfect like a lot of the new lenses out there, but still resolves well, it has great color this might be a lens to consider if you have the means to afford it. Now, this is a heavier lens, as I mentioned, manual focus. So if you don't have the patience or nor you don't want this heavy of a lens, you may wanna opt some for something else, but I would definitely say give this a shot. That's my Clip Notes version. We'll go in more in depth right now. Now, this lens, of course, uh, being a vintage lens and being a relatively rare lens, goes for a premium. On eBay, they're anywhere from a thousand plus US dollars, even higher, depending on the condition of it. This lens that I've been testing is pretty much mint condition, so I think it's gonna go pretty high up in price when Rice Ball sells it after this review. But uh, I'm very fortunate enough to use it. Anyway, let's talk about the build quality and optics on this. Build quality, it is a full metal lens, beautifully made. Um, it is a heavy lens at 660 grams. You have six elements, five groups, eight aperture blades inside of this. Close focusing is 1.3 meters. So it's not the most, you know, you can't really get macro shots with this lens, nor is it designed for that. It's designed for portraiture and to really obliterate your background on any subject that you're shooting but uh, the performance out of it is absolutely stunning. Yes, it is. Um, it has a, a lens hood built into it. It's an external lens hood built in on this. It is a metal hood. It's you pull it out and you twist, but it's not like twist a lock hood. It's a twist and there's tension to it, um, but it does a relatively good job in reducing flare and it is made of metal. So keep that in mind. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you want to protect this lens as much as possible because it is a beautifully made lens. So you might want to wrap that lens hood just with a piece of clear plastic. That would be my recommendation because I like to keep my lenses looking as good as possible, but each to each their own, right? Um, but you cannot pull out the lens hood when you have the lens cap on it, so keep that in mind as well. Now, this is the new FD mount versus the FD mount. The, re the difference is really the screw lock mechanism that's on the back of the lens. And the screw lock is a little bit uh, cumbersome when you're adapting it to uh, other cameras out there, but the new FD is relatively simple. You press a button, you turn it, lock it, you're good to go. And the aperture ring on this is from F2 to F32. Uh, besides that though, it just looks great. It's got this beautiful black paint finish to it. It's just solid. It's just such a well-made lens. This is a lens made in Japan. And if you like that, and that's something that really attracts you, especially to that, you know, that vintage Canon era, right? This is going to be a lens to definitely consider. Okay. So what is it like to use? Well, I tried it on film with the Canon F1N, the camera right here. I'll probably be doing a, re a review on this camera in the future. And I've also used it on the Canon R5. Now with the F1N, because this lens is quite long, right? There's, it's very front heavy. So I would definitely recommend an AE winder or some sort of grip, external grip to the F1N to sort of give you a little bit more balance because it's got a little bit of a tiny grip there, but I found it to be a bit um, challenging to hold for, for long periods of time with a film camera. Now, with the R5, of course, it has a much larger grip. It is much easier to use in that regard. Again, it is still front heavy, so keep that in mind. And it does kind of increase the weight of it. Here it is on the R5 right here, and it's adapted. But um, it is much easier to use than on the F1N. Now, as I mentioned, it's a manual focus lens, so you're gonna have to rely on focus peaking and magnification. The R5's magnification of focus peaking is fantastic and it is very accurate. Same with the R3, by the way. I'm filming this review on the R3. I've been testing that out. And uh, it works really well. It's very easy to acquire focus at F2. It's still a very thin, shallow depth of field to it, but it's much easier than a 1.4 or 1.2 in that regard. But for a manual focus lens, I wouldn't want anything faster than an F2 for a 135 millimeter focal length especially because 
to be using it on film. It's very hard to focus on film uh, unless you have a diopter or unless you have some sort of magnifier on it or you wear glasses for that matter, but on digital it is much easier. Now I know they make autofocus lenses that are 1.8, but that's autofocus versus manual focus to neither here nor there. Anyway, uh, let's talk about optics for a second because I'm sure that's what most of you are interested in. How is it? How does it perform? Can it resolve 45 megapixels on the R5? As I mentioned earlier, yes, it can. This was something I was quite shocked about. Even myself and Leon from Rice Ball Photography who took photos of me with this, we compared it to the EF-135 F2. We actually preferred the image quality out of this lens versus the EF. The EF may have had a smoother bokeh. This has a little bit more character to the bokeh. It's not busy, but a little bit more character. But the colors, the contrast, the sharpness of F2 is really impressive. For a 41-year-old lens, I didn't expect this, but it is that good. You can adapt this lens. It doesn't have to go onto a Canon body. You can put it onto, a, say, a Sony body or a Nikon body or even a Leica body for that matter. But if you are open to that and you want to beautiful 135 lens that's sharp, beautiful contrast. It doesn't get much better than this. This is a really beautiful lens optically to use. Minimal fringing, minimal, okay? And I wasn't expecting that out of a 41-year-old lens. I mean, but is it gonna compare to, let's say, RF lenses of today? No, it's not. Those lenses are fantastic. They're optically perfect, right? I mean, how much better can you really get? But this has a little je ne sais quoi to it, a little bit of character that just makes it so unique and so special that when you take images with it, people notice, they really do like, what are you shooting with? What is that? This 135 is that kind of lens. Anyway, um, I'm gonna show you some sample images right now with film, with digital, comparison with the EF-135 F2 so you can see the difference and I'll come back with my final thoughts. So as you can tell by the images that I just shown you, the optics out of this lens are, mwah, it's beautiful. I love this lens. I mean, it is very limiting to 135, I get it. It's not an everyday lens. This is a very specialized lens. But if you're the type of photographer, or even videographer for that matter, that you like longer focal lengths, you like the compression, you like how it isolates subjects, it really doesn't get much better than this lens. Now, I'm, there are other lenses out there to compare with. I, I know I get that. But for a manual focus lens that's 41 years old, this is beautiful, beautiful. If you have the means, as I mentioned earlier in this video, and you are open to adapting different lenses to your camera system, this is a lens to heavily consider. Anyway, once again, if you've liked this video, please like, subscribe to the channel, helps me out a lot. Big thanks to Rice Ball Photography once again for loaning me this lens. But with that, take care, stay safe, and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.